Hi, I'm Steve Davis. Welcome to our weekly video series where we take the chance to discuss our thoughts and ideas on a range of issues that are, pertain to our clients and our markets. Today I'm joined by Paul Trotter, founder and CEO of Authorit. Paul, welcome. Oh, thank you. Pleasure to be here, Steve. Paul, you and I get the chance to talk to a lot of executives in different, different companies and, and talk about a range of issues to do with our market. But one of the things that always strikes me is, is just the, the fundamental premise of documentation and how it's created. And one of the things that we see is we believe the way that documentation is created right now is wrong. Can you expand on that idea? Yeah, I think it's, a, it's, um, it's, it's very interesting. What, what I've observed being in this industry for 15, 20 years now is we've got a, a situation where documentation has essentially remained static in what I would refer to as a first generation of, of automation or computerization. And if you look at, at other industries that have progressed further along this these generations of software. Let's take financial um, software as an example. What typically happens is stage one, or first generation, is this software simulation of the original paper process. So mm -hmm. the software simulation kind of takes that paper process and tries to automate it and put it on a computer. And the spreadsheet's the example of that in the financial world. Mm -hmm. And yeah, brought lots of really great innovations and improvements over doing it in paper. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't really give enough. And so then the second generation comes along and says, you know what, why are we restricting ourselves to the, effectively the format of the way things used to be laid out? Let's take the data out of this, this boundary format and put it into a database where we can start to enforce business rules, we can start to use the data in much more creative ways. And that first generation is typically very difficult for someone to create um, a really end-to-end -end system, so everyone picks off a little piece of it, and that's kind of a best-of-breed approach. They'll take, um, oh, well, I'm going to do general ledger, or I'm going to do payroll, or I'm going to do accounts receivable. And then we went through that second generation of best-of-breed, where big consulting money like Deloitte and Accenture made buckets of money trying to tie these things together mm -hmm. into a solution. But then that resulted in these strip mall solutions of products that, when fully integrated, couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't be upgraded, they couldn't be moved because the cost of changing or upsetting this, this uh, integrated system was too high. And so people got stuck with these systems. And then the third generation comes along, which is like SAP or Oracle, where they've said, well, let's get an end-to-end -end solution mm -hmm. where everything's produced by a single organization. And, and then that avoided all of those problems with integrations. And, and again, the systems moved forward to the third generation. And now we're seeing with uh, cloud and with software as a service, this fourth generation where they're saying, well, the big problem now is that it's so complicated to install and run and maintain and upgrade and service these systems. And in fact, I have to hire a whole bunch of people to learn all of that stuff, whereas you know, SAP already know how to run their system. So why don't we just let them do it? Sure. And so what we're trying to do with Authorit is to do that thing for documentation because documentation, unfortunately, is just languished mm -hmm. in the original format, which is this paper simulator. Yeah, this, so we, we haven't really moved on from the typewriter. No, the not process. at all. Not at all. And, and so we're stuck in this word processor and you say, oh, what about XML systems? It's still a document. Mm -hmm. It's still being edited and written as a file and done exactly the same way. They haven't moved past um, the paper simulator. Sure. And, and even if you say, well, I've got a content management system, well, what, in essence, what is it? Well, I'm taking these files and storing them. In a doc and everything's locked in the document. Yeah, everything's still in these yeah. files and still in the document. They've just changed the format a few times. Yeah. So what we're saying is that that's not the answer. The answer is to strip the data out of the document, rip it out, get rid of the document, mm -hmm. and say what we want is we want to be able to take that data and put it into a proper structure where the information becomes reusable. And so that's what we're trying, that's what we're trying to achieve. And by taking us to the cloud, not only we've got this end-to-end -end system, mm -hmm. but we're also in that fourth generation. So we're able to take clients now from, who are still languishing in this first generation all the way through to the fourth generation and finally have a system that gives writers and organizations the ability to properly create, manage, and produce their content. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. One of the things we see, I mean, one of the questions we ask ourselves a lot is, you know, why would an executive even care about this? And sometimes we lament, I guess, about the lack of visibility that the documentation or content problem has within an enterprise. But if you think about the impacts of this, so, so how does this impact an organization? I mean, let's think about time to market for a moment. So we know that, you know, we've mentioned Samsung and Apple the, you know, the other day. Samsung, Apple, you know, they've got a very short product release cycles, you know, very, very short cycles overall for their products. And often, you know, the documentation and the training languishes behind and gets left way, way behind the production uh, development cycle of the product itself. And then it becomes an afterthought. 
So of course, you know, what happens is, you know, really the, the written word is communication with their marketplace, yep. communication with their clients, and, and they, you know, it's, it's essential. And, and when we think about industries like life sciences, you know, what happens there? I mean, they're spending billions of dollars on drugs, it goes all the way through development, and then we come to the end, and then you've got this squeeze documentation cycle where, um, where you're trying to do regulatory and product documentation, and of course, that's a problem. Yeah, and the whole system relies on human reviews and mm -hmm. humans making sure that the system, the information is consistent across all of the different deliverables. And it, it's just prone to error and creates, in some cases, enormous uh, compliance issues for the companies that produce it. Mm -hmm. and I think one of, the, one of the examples, if you go back to the financial example, you know, when, when a big company tries to do or run their accounts on, on spreadsheets, you get situations where the company doesn't know what the what different parts of it are doing because no one's sharing information in a common system. And the same thing holds true for documentation. If that information is able to be reused easily, is able to be discovered mm -hmm. easily, is able to be translated in the same way, then you get massive reusability and you get the, the consistency, you get the confidence that the information that you're producing in one document is actually the same that's going to be produced in another deliverable. And that gets around these compliance issues um, where you've got, you know, let's let's go life sciences for a second. You've got a label saying one thing, yeah, but the instructions for use document yeah. saying something completely yeah. different. And what are the consequences of that? Yeah. Well, you hit the point before reuse, right? Yeah. It's all about reuse. I mean, and, and you know, the typical way of reusing is cutting and pasting, which just destroys the whole concept of single exactly. source you know, one source of the truth. So if we can drive reuse, and I mean, this is again, this is why executives should care. If we can drive reuse into their content creation and their delivery um, processes, it, all of the benefits flow downstream from that. Yeah. And, if you, and if you're right in documents, I mean, we believe it's inherently wrong, right? Yeah. It's just, it's broken. It it's, doesn't make any sense for us in our modern age to be doing something that was invented and literally <laughs> uh, yeah. back in, in, in the dark ages where documents began and we're yeah. still doing it the same way. Okay. Okay, so if we if let's summarize three points to, to finish up. So I think we, we number one, writing in documents is wrong. It's broken. Okay, what's number two? Number two is by getting out of this document, by elevating yourself out of the document, mm -hmm. you're able to take all of this data, which that's what it is, mm -hmm. call it content, call it data, and reuse it and use it in lots of different places. And not only that, you get the downstream, and that's probably point number, number three, three yeah, yeah, the, the benefits. downstream benefits mm -hmm. of, of having you know, lower costs in your localization or translation. It's mm -hmm. every downstream process, whether it be reviewing content, localizing content, mm -hmm. producing multiple different kinds of deliverables out of the content, mm -hmm. deliverable on multiple devices, mm -hmm. multiple devices. All of these are the downstream effect of having content that is managed properly and stripped out of a document so that it lives within a database where it's discoverable and reusable Right. And, right. and becomes an asset to the organization rather than a hindrance. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're going to come back to a lot of these points in the future. Thanks very much, Paul. It's been, been an honor. Great. Thank you very much, Steve. Cheers. Awesome.